Hi all. Um, welcome to our webinar. I've decided uh, to go live just a little bit earlier than planned, like two minutes before. Um, I suppose you would also wait a couple of minutes uh, for like other viewers, and we can t spend this couple of minutes if you have like, any questions. We will be able. I will be able even to answer you. So hi there. Oh, from Japan, so far away. Cool. <laughs> hi there. So very nice to see you all here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Tell the truth, I'm worried a lot. So I sincerely hope there will be like no throwing tomatoes, and I'm pretty happy that it's all online. <laughs> so welcome, welcome all. Thank you for coming. Really. <laughs> Um, so maybe mm, I can like briefly introduce myself for now, like there can be a small intro before we really start. Um, so again, thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Um, this is our February very first one, so I'd really hope that the last one. And uh, today's webinar will be um, titled like February for product teams. So. Who I am. My name is Paulina, and in February I'm in charge of customer love, support, and sometimes panic. And I'm that human that will answer you in uh, intercom chats. Uh, you will have a talk with me if we would someday have a demo or a conversation, and so on. Um, so, oh God, I still already have users from Japan and Italy and Virginia. Whoa. I'm surprised. And Holland, whoa! <laughs> oh my god, I wasn't expecting that. That's really inspiring. It's Fiber is from Belarus. Uh, so it's so nice to see so many people from so different countries. Like, incredible feeling. And from Minsk, привет! <laughs> Minsk is our homeland as well. So very nice to see you. Um, so... Uh, just I see, I see that this is uh, time to start already. So let's uh, start with some housekeeping, I suppose. Uh, our webinar, I do really hope, will uh, take roughly 35, 40 minutes. If you'll have more answers, <laughs> for sure it will take longer, as we'll have two parts. So firstly, I'm going to tell you about what Fiber is and how it can work, uh, how it can work for product, for product teams. And you can also ask any questions you like. Uh, so you can ask your questions during the demo as well. And I sincerely hope that uh, today, uh, during our webinar, uh, us will join as well our founder, Michael Dubakov. He will be, uh, he will be leaving in our chats and will answer all the questions, um, just maybe even during the demo or after. Um, so just feel free to throw all the questions uh, and I don't know, any highs and hellos uh, in the chat. It will also record our webinar and it will arrive in our YouTube channel soon. In yep, we have a YouTube channel and there we will also share the setup. Uh, I will be sharing with you. Yay, Michael here. Woo, hooray, Michael has inst internet. Was crossing fingers for that. Nice. Um, so as for the agenda, we'll talk about how to get started with Fibery. If you're interested in product management, which value can you get? And I'm also really glad to share that we are starting our concierge service, Super Paulina. And we, <laughs> no, it was not me who came up with the name. Uh, so it will be free and I will share with you all the details, how it works um, uh, in the end of the demo. And right now I would suppose, uh, I suppose I would even add a special button so you could check that page right now. So while we're waiting for all the others, let me add that button. Okay, super, Paulina. Nice. Okay, here uh, down in the video has to appear a green button that is called Super Paulina. You can click on it and just check our upcoming concierge service and all the details. And also feel free to ping us with any questions about that as well. Um, hi from France, Denver, Germany, Switzerland. Oh my God, Australia. Wow, <laughs> that's really just incredible. Thank you again for coming. And how do I feel? Maybe let's get it started. Oh, Mount Cook as well. <laughs> so 
Let me start sharing my screen. I hope it will work. We've tested it, really. So I really hope it will work. Okay. Okay. I hope you can see the screen, the connections, right? Okay. So what do you see here? So these are processes we are going to walk through on today's demo. Uh, so this are research, strategy, execution part, and feedback management. That's not all the processes co Fabric can cover, but we suppose that this may be the, common, the most common one for product teams. And I think we need some context. So let's start. Imagine you're a product company. Crazy, right? Okay. And you have a product and it was released already and we already have a lot of features done and a lot of successful objective past but we still don't have enough customers, like as we expected, and lots of our leads users leave our product within a few hours. Unpleasant. Uh, but there is a new quarter coming and we need to define our strategy and solve that problem. How to start? I think it's time to ask our target users about their opinion. We have an assumption that maybe our product is too complicated from the first glance. So let's go to our user research and create a new study. So we want to check, uh, 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 we want to ask our target users whether our, and check whether our product is complicated or not. I'm navigating to the studies by state board and want to create a new study here. So let's add it and call, does our product look, look to, complicated ah god sorry looks too complicated to use okay we've added a new study let's move it from you to the planet stage and let's open it and maybe add some context and also plan some interviews so we can open it uh, let's assign me here and like add some dates. So we are going to plan the study for this period of time and we want to have five interviews. So two will be enough, but our target is five. Okay, later here we can add some descriptions and interview templates, the questions we are going to ask to get the study results we would receive. But now let's just plan some interviews. So we are going to talk with Anne and she's very nice product manager from incredible startup. Okay, sounds good. And we are also going to talk maybe with Anton. We don't know who is he, but he sounds like a professional. Okay, nice. So we've decided to make, uh, to make a user research. We had an assumption, we created a study to check that. And after creating a study, we decided to make some interviews. Although our target is five, for now we've planned only two of it. Now let's navigate to the interviews we've, we've planned. Okay, so uh, we're navigating to the interview. We're in the interview already, jump there from study. And we see the study this interview belongs to, which state is here, maybe it is scheduled already. Uh, let's assign someone as well who will be responsible for that interview and also plan some date. Let's do that on Saturday. Okay. And here we would keep some notes and here is maybe will come the most powerful part of Fibery, uh, Fibery Wiki and Fibery um, connections with text. So um, I don't, I have a kind of uh, template with notes. So I would just copy paste it. Sorry, you'll, I'll have to, <laughs> to jump from my screen to screen. So I will just add some notes from, oh, I have it here. Sorry. So you can make your notes in Fibery just, um, just during the call, but it will take a lot of time right now to make all the notes. So just copy pasted it from my notepad. Okay and share it with us some important feedback from your side. She shared with us tools she's using now. Also, she shared with us her processes she wants to cover. Um, and she also shared with us her loves 
and pains and fears. I suppose that pains and fears will be the most valuable part for us right now, but let's start from the part that tool she is using now. Uh, because tools she is using now, in fact, are our competitors if we are going to replace them, right? So we want on this part, we want not only to know from N which competitors she is using now, but also why she is using them. Uh, maybe they are very simple for which departments and so on. And we also know, we also want not to lose the context and remember it for a while. So to get that, let's add some piece of fiber magic and use mentions. Uh, what are mentions? We can, how to say, mention, <laughs> sorry, uh, another piece of fiber entities in text. Let's see how it works. First, I want to mention Trello. I have it already in the list of competitors. I'm doing that like this. Now I can replace all the other tools with simple mentions. Here it is. And the last one is Jira. Nice. Okay, now it looks not only more, co more colorful, but it is also pretty more powerful. Uh, we can navigate from this page to any of those competitors and see how many other users previously in other interviews referenced that, mentioned that in their uh, conversations. So we can jump to Trello just from here and see the reference it came from. So right now this tool was mentioned only one time, but if we would continue making other interviews with other users, maybe it would be mentioned more. And also later when we would open the Trello, we would see what do other users are thinking about this competitor and why are they using it? So that would give us pretty powerful insights about what do we have to improve in our product. Okay, this is how our mentions work. And now let's navigate to the panes. <laughs> navigate to the panes. Okay, sorry. Um, and see what's going on here. Okay, I think it will look better now. So Anne mentioned that dependency management is missing. And she's also confused uh, because she doesn't know whether we're going to stay alive or not. And she said that product is so complicated and she even can't understand how to use that. Okay, Anne was pretty transparent with us. And let's create some insights out of her feedback. So uh, now we're going to link a piece of text to the already existing entity, just like we did with our competitors but not a mention, but a highlight. So let's highlight that piece of text. We think that this feedback is pretty powerful, is pretty important for us, and we're going to link it. We're going to link it to the inside. So let's choose that as a source and uh, find the necessary insight, whether we have it. Dependency management is, is missing the timeline. Nice, we have it already. So we can link, link to the existing one. So this is a problem we know already. We have it in our backlog. And now we need only to count how many users are complaining of that to understand whether this insight is really important or not. So we did that. And now let's just highlight all the other piece of text. Are you going to still alive? When did you launch? So looks like this is insight that users are worried about our survivability. <laughs> Let's add such an insight and check whether we have it. I really don't remember. So users are worried that we will not survive. Nice. Let's link it and link the last, the most important one. Here is the insight. Here it is. And our product looks too complicated from the early beginning. We have that highlight, uh, we have that insight already, but let's create a new one. Let's see how can we create new insights out of the text. So, um, getting started is not enough for non-tech users. Let's say this is our insight we're creating. Okay, looks pretty nice. We've created that. And now we can navigate to any of those insights we've linked our text to, for example, right here, and also see 
when it was born and why. So anytime you would open any of your insights, no matter when did you create it, right now, a month ago, even a year ago, you will also see when it was born, why, and how many people with a formula that calculates that asked us about that issue we're having. And we can also add some solution ideas and descriptions. And if we already have a solution in mind, we can also add features on that level. But let's wait for that. What? Let's wait for a while. Um, I'm finally closing that piece uh, of the hierarchy. And let's see what else our research app has. So all the we, here we have all the insights like this. And we can check whether we have here something we've already created. So this view is uh, also checking all the insights we have. And it also sources showing the one, the most popular that we have mentioned more than the others in different interviews. Okay, so looks good enough. Um, what have we done? We had an assumption, we created a study, from study we created interview, and from interview we got pretty poll insights. And now we see that, yep, our assumption was pretty true. Uh, it was correct. And in, I suppose it's time to create a new objective. How do I feel? Let's go to our strategy and say that our objective will be make our product user-friendly. So let's go to our objectives overview board. Here it is. And add a new one. So I suppose it will be a future one. So we want to make our product user-friendly. Oh, user-friendly. Sorry. Friend. I'm worried so much. Ah, friend. Lee, like this. Finally. Oh, sorry. So we've decided to make our product user-friendly. And this is our objective. So let's open it. And here we're able to add to plan some key results and add some features. So connect our strategy and execution parts. So let's plan maybe some key results. Um, let's add one that we want NPC more than 40 or more than 50 because like we're very optimistic about this objective, right? Uh, we've added a key result and maybe we have already some features in mind because we have pretty powerful insights. We understood that we have an objective and now we know how to solve it. Now, our users were complaining that getting started is too complicated and for non-tech savvy users. So we have two features, how to solve it. At least two features right now. Later, we can link one more. Um, we are going to hide tech savvy things from UI. Nice. And create Jarvis, our AI assistant. Remember, I told you that we are pretty optimistic about our possibilities. Nice. So we've created two features just over from here. And now let's maybe repeat again what had happened. We went to our user research, created a study. From study, we planned some interviews. From interviews, we got some powerful insights. Based on that insights, we planned a new objective, created an objective, set some key results, and remembering about the insights we've we had from our interviews, we planned some features. Okay, pretty nice. I suppose that's good enough for this objective. Uh, we can also check our objectives in another kinds of view that is called hierarchical lists. So we can open any objective and see the execution part that is planned. So here like looks like we have nothing and also have some features that doesn't have any objectives. Okay. Uh, I suppose we've done the strategy. If you'll have any questions about these parts, please throw them at chat. I suppose Michael, <laughs> I really hope Michael will answer or we will be later back to it. Okay, uh, we have done with our strategy part and talking about features, let's go to the road mapping, right? So we have a road mapping here. We have features, backlog, features roadmap and features Kanban. Features, uh, so this is just different parts uh, different ways to visualize all the features we have. So we want to have a backlog. Uh, we want to have a timeline that shows us all the planet things and also shows us uh, 
our features that we have planned but haven't set dates for and also a Kanban board that shows all the features we have in plans. So uh, let's open our feature create Jarvis AI assistant and make it more unique, more specific. So here in description, we can handle our specification. So what are we waiting from that feature? Uh, I'm not a developer myself, so my specification will be super easy. I want Jarvis to talk. I want Jarvis to love and I want him to write a symphony. Nothing complicated, I hope. Okay. And then developer will be, will be working on that feature. He can like mark what was done and I'm as product manager, I will check what's going on. Oh, for sure. I've made a mistake. Sorry. Okay. We've added some specification here. We can set a milestone. That would be a launch for product teams. Also here we have uh, reach, impact and confidence and effort. So to calculate our race score. So let's say our reach here is 600. Impact is massive because Jarvis will be a very powerful guy. And our confidence is about 40%. Mm, what about effort? I don't think that's pretty complicated. So let it be five. Okay. And here we have our rice score 100. 44 because formula is smart enough to calculate that and I can also plan some dates I mean if we start today I hope two weeks is enough right sure okay I can also assign other users but there is no other users in this workspace and I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to assign myself for that feature so here you'll be able to handle whole scope to plan the feature is itself also to prioritize it and check what's going on right now I think we're missing something right now. Um, I've told that we have a feature that was born out of objective, that was based on the interview and insights, but looks like feature can be cut, can be divided into user stories and bugs, real pieces of exe execution work. So it looks like we're missing software development. We don't have it right now, and I didn't plan to show it to you like uh, based on the whiteboard I've shared with you in the early beginning. But nice news, we have a templates here. So let's navigate and find a software development template. We will be able to install it and connect with the road mapping. So you'll see that it's not very complicated. So where do we have it? Retrospectives, software development, here it is. I hope it will be, it will have been installed and nothing will go wrong. Okay, we're installing. And nice, here we have it. Let's drag and drop it just under the road mapping. And let's see what do we have inside here. So this template is about sprint releases, stories and bugs. So it is prepared for Scrum. Um, I think that works for me. So let's open a view that is called sprint planning. And here we have only one user story. Um, nice, what do I want? What do I need? I want to go to my feature and see which user stories and which bugs it consists of, right? So the same as we did uh, when we were planning our interviews for studies, the same we did when we were uh, planning our key results and features for the objectives, the same I want to do for the software development part. Uh, now we will navigate to a very special screen that is called My Apps. It lives in the left menu, so here we are. And here we'll see all the apps we have on our left menu, but together on one screen combined and with arrows that shows relations between those processes. So our uh, objectives are connected with features, objectives are also connected with key results, our studies has many interviews, and the same thing we want to do with features and stories and bugs. So let's add something we call in five relations. I hope it will take less than a minute, so you can set a timer if you need. So I've checked, I've clicked on the feature itself. It opened and showed me the scheme of any feature, like a kind of template with all the fields any feature has. Remember, we were filling in reach, impact, confidence, and effort fields and so on. All the relations it has in already. So we can set for objective already, uh, we can set for a feature already objective, milestone, and insight. 
some formulas here and we want to add a user story. So I'm clicking on the new field or relation button. Here it is. And I'm going to add a relation. And I'm going to connect feature with user story. Okay, here it is. My feature can have multiple stories and story can have only one feature at the same time. Nice. Here the arrow appeared just after that I added the relation. And now let's add the same for the box. This is a relation to bug. Okay, feature has many bugs. Bug has one feature. Hope it works. Okay, nice. We've added relation. I hope it took like them less than one minute. Two more errors appeared. And now let's see what have changed on the feature level. Let's navigate back to our Kanban board and open our uh, Jarvis. We see all the things we've added up before. And once we scroll, ta-da! We have here stories and bugs. Nice! And we can link them right now. So let's drag and drop it and put it just upper so we could see everything here. Okay. And we can create on link existing stories we have already in our software development uh, template, or we can create a new one. So I want to add user stories like teach Jarvis talk, teach him love, and that's good enough for the early beginning. And let's also link already existing bug from the template, the first ever bug. Okay, it is even done already. We are really lucky. Okay, looks like our red mapping works much better now, together with software development. I'm pretty proud of myself. And that software development part uh, template also uh, supports uh, sprint planning as Scrum, as I've mentioned before. Uh, and what else do we have now uh, to do? We have, we have made a user research. Based on the user research, we planned some objective. We decided which features do we need to reach that objective. And we understood uh, which user stories and bugs uh, will we have. <laughs> we didn't, for sure, didn't plan which bugs will we have. But let's say our feature is done, all the stories are done as well. And we've even released our features and now are waiting. Waiting for the feedback. Because we need to understand whether that was enough or we need to do something else. So uh, to collect our feedback, we, use it, we suggest to use different sources. So this can be uh, ordinary like conversations and interviews like we were doing in the user research, or we can use external tools. So Fibre only pretends to be on and on. one. Uh, in fact, we really understand that other tools handle some cases much better than we can maybe in, even in some future. So we are ready for integrations. And my as a customer support goal is Intercom, the favorite, the most favorite one. And here we have it. So let's go to the Intercom and see how can it be helpful in common or not. So tell the truth, uh, we were thinking about how to add Intercom integration, the real one. Um, so really added a real one Intercom uh, integration uh, from Fibre. And uh, I will open with you some uh, real notes with our real customers and users. Of course, you will not see their emails and so on, but all the texts are original. So let's open it. And OK, we've set some objective. And then a very super important customer came and said that, sorry, guys, I understand you are pretty awesome and I respect all the objectives, but your price is super high and I do not understand why. We're saying, OK. That looks like one more problem we didn't think about before, that users think that our product is too expensive. And this is a problem we're going to solve, right, in the future. Uh, but to solve it, we have to remember about it. And our problem is an insight. So let's create from our customer feedback, already, uh, already existing customer, this piece of text. So we've, I've highlighted the piece of text and I'm going to link it to the insight. Again, just like we did it in the early beginning, but now it's not a user research, but working with the feedback itself. And our users think that product 
is overpriced. Okay, I created an inside and now we can navigate there. Nice. And soon a reference will appear. So maybe I have some internet lags. Oh yes, here it is. Okay, good enough as a separate goal. I don't know how to work with that. I don't know what will be our solution ideas, but a product manager will come. He will see that inside and thinking, okay, I don't think that our product is overpriced. So let me see why did users decide like that. He can see the reference with all the context and he see that our product is compared with Coda and Notion, although we want it, for example, to be compared with Jira and Aha, who knows? Or maybe with uh, Aha and Dovetail. So, and then he understands that the problem, in fact, was different. And not that users think that, pro that product is overpriced, that user um, thinks about wrong competitors. Okay, and that's the problem our product manager is going to solve. So he was able to understand the real problem because when he opened the inside, he was able to see the reference, where it came from, and just reformulate, and now we will go into say to, to solve the real one. Okay, let's maybe open another conversation with Medias. Okay, I'm having an annoying bug recently, a few days now. Oh god, our user found a bug. Ah, what a shame. And what do we have to do now? Looks like we have to link that piece of text to the bug. So let's do that because we can link our pieces of text not only to insights, but to any piece of information in Fibre, any. So if we want to link it to the bug, let's choose a bug instead of insight and put something here. Super urgent bug in documents. Nice. We create it here right now. We can navigate to it. And we can also add steps to reproduce, fill in like some sprints, assignees, efforts, release, and so on. But also a reference will appear. I really hope I don't have problems with the internet. It would be such a shame. And see where it came from and see all the context. Okay. I hope it will appear. You've seen it before. It really appeared before. So I hope that the problem is only in my internet. Okay, let's close it. So this is how you can also handle the customer's feedback as well. Uh, and like accumulate knowledge base all over the fiber. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I suppose that's all with having an overview of with uh, among all the processes we have here right now. But we started talking about integrations and intercom is just an example of how it works. Let's go to our templates gallery. Here we have a block that is called integrations. These are tools Fibre has integrations out of the box and we hope that this will be pretty helpful for product teams. Braintree if once you want to track your purchases and all your financial documentations in Fibre. Discourse and intercom works good for accumulating feedback from community or from real chats. Soon, one or two weeks, Zendesk integration is coming as well. So there will be one more block to accumulate customer's feedback. Also, we have a GitLab and GitHub here once you decide to use Fiber for software development as well. And if not, and your developers has kind of South Stockholm syndrome and they want to stay in Jira, that's also okay. We have an integration with Jira too. Uh, Slack. For team communications, there is no chat in Fibre. And Trello, if you have some, I don't know, boards your uh, users are really in love with. And even if there is no integrations, uh, like your, if there are integrations you are missing, we have a Zapier one and we have public API, so you can edit on your own. Um, I suppose, I really hope that I didn't miss anything I've planned because I have even some notes not to forget what to say. Um, so I hope it is time for our Q&A session. I'll uh, just maybe I will navigate to our Super Paulina uh, page so you could read it. I hope that you've already clicked on the button uh, with Super Paulina. So just maybe I'll uh, tell you some words about it. This is our free concierge service. So if you love something I've shown you, 
but you have doubts whether it can work for your company, um, whether maybe there are some cases you are not sure in and uh, just you want to check something, we will be able to help. Fiverr is fully customizable. Uh, you can like edit any fields, add any processes, uh, track any types. So just like we did with software development, we can do with any process you have in your company. And we are really glad to help you. So we're providing a free service. Uh, you can just click on the button Super Polina. It must be somewhere here, right? And just uh, schedule some calls. Uh, Super Polina includes a set of calls. Uh, 45 minutes uh, plus responsive intercom. You can stop anytime. So if some uh, during some call we would understand that fiber is not a fit for you, we would like we would be glad also to recommend you our competitors that would work better for you. Um, and uh, we will set up the, the workspace for you and your team, and we'll also help with onboarding if necessary. So please, please click on the button and check <laughs> and subscribe. So we'll be really glad to help you if that is possible in common. So, and now, finally, it's time for a Q&A. It will be my first Q&A session. Maybe Michael already answered everything. So, let us check. Uh, so, looks like there were some problems. Glad to know that everything's okay right now. So, I would just, sorry, I would keep silence and check some questions we have in our chats. Feel free to add new ones if you have. So there was a, a question about formulas in Fibery, so that you can create. Okay, maybe I can show you if needed how formulas work. How do you feel about the guess? Do you have um, whether I need to do that? It can look pretty complicated, but I really love that feature. Okay, so I see. No <laughs> comments like, no, no, Paliza, Palina, please don't show us that formulas. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, God, we have other question. What is reference? And uh, what is the white circular arrow green background in the bottom right cor corner of the text box? Uh, so let's answer what are references. Let's uh, repeat it again. Let's navigate to user research or maybe... Yep, to use a research and open interviews we have. So here we have it. Here we have interviews we've added before. Okay, let's open the interview with N. And um, references is something appears after mentions or highlights. Uh, so in Fibri, you can mention other entities we have. So, for example, on, imagine in our interview, Anne found that found our bug. So, so she found our very first bug, and she's complaining about that. So we can mention that bug like this. Our very first bug. Here it is. Ah, where is it? The first ever bug right here, and we mention it. And when we mention it, we can navigate to the to the bug just from this part and we will see when was it born so when it where it was referenced uh, remember so uh, we've had one reference before and soon the other one will appear maybe it takes a couple of minutes I would refresh my screen hope it will not break everything There is still one reference, shame on us. I hope it will just appear maybe in a couple of minutes and so on. So there will be one more reference when it was mentioned before. The same works for highlighted text. So let's navigate back to Anne's interview. Okay, here we have a highlighted text, link it to the real inside. And we go into the inside and we can see when and where it was referenced. Like this, that we referenced this inside in this interview. And we can navigate back here. Just like this. Ta-da! So these are references. We're using them um, to connect feedback with real execution part. So, for example, in Fibery, just 
maybe let me share with you our cases, Fibery. Uh, you can ping us in the intercom and say, oh God, I, like, I want to have undelete feature. I'm saying, okay, thank you for that. Highlight your piece of text and link it to the real existing feature that is called undelete. Then Michael would come and say, oh my God, 50 people already are asking for that feature. We have to do it right now, immediately. That will be in our scope. Something like that. Almost real story. <laughs> okay. Hope that was helpful. Let me navigate to a more helpful screen while uh, we'll be checking all the other questions. Okay. Got it. Nice. Uh, can you already say when you will publish a new API? I suppose that's more question to Michael. Yep, and not. <laughs> so thank you for the answer. Um, yes, reference is a pointer. Okay, uh, so is it possible to have stories with subtasks in lanes like Azure DevOps? Um, I think that such question will be nice to throw at us in intercom together with the screenshot. How do you want to visualize it? Because can we have stories with subtasks? Sure, we have. Uh, sure, we can. Let's see how can we do it. Uh, but whether the visualization will be as you expect, I'm not sure for that because I don't have any references right here. So let's add a subtask right now to our user story. So let's go to this page, my apps again. So that will be the one where we are going to customize and that's something new. And here in software development, you have release, story, bug and spread. And we want to have a subtasks as well and want them to live just under our user stories. So let's create a new colorful block here. That is something that we call types, by the way, and call it subtask. Nice, it is boring uh, gray color, so I want to make it Powerful, really brightful red one. Okay, we have a subtask. You can also on your own add all the necessary fields here. So now it has a default one, only name and description. But if you want to track effort um, or dates or maybe some scoring, you can add new field just in the place where we're adding relations here. Choose the one you need and add it. So that is fully customizable. And now we need to connect stories with subtasks, just the same like we connected features with stories, right? Because in our previous case, we wanted stories live under features. And now I want subtasks live under stories. So I want to go deeper to the our hierarchy. So let's connect it. Let's click on our stories and build a new relation. In fact, build a new arrow. Build a relation with subtask. Story can have multiple subtasks and subtask sub can have only one story at the same time. Good enough. We're adding an arrow. Here it appears. And now let's check what had, hap what had changed. We have our sprints planning and we can open any user story and we can scroll and see subtasks appeared. Ta -da! Here it is, we can drag, drag and drop and maybe like teaching uh, a, a assistant love will consist of many subtasks like create a love and make a love friendly, maybe like this. Okay, now we have subtasks as well and we can navigate to them too. And now what is cool? Hmm. Let's see whether we can navigate from our subtask to the objective. I hope yes. So we have a subtask and our subtask has a story and we can jump from child to parent. Okay, now we see we have a story and our story belongs to the feature. So let's find our feature. Okay, here it is, create your SI assistant. Nice, we're navigating to the parent again. And our feature belongs to the objective here it is. So we can navigate it as well. And now we've traveled just through the whole tree, through the whole hierarchy, from the lowest level of our subtask to the objective. And we can understand why are we doing that piece of job. <laughs> Thank you for a nice question. I really hope it was a correct answer. <laughs> you were talking about something like this. 
Let's go and see whether maybe there are any other questions. Okay. Um, so what about workflow automation? Uh, so as far as I see, Michael answered everything already. Oh my God, such a shame for me. <laughs> Is there something um, we can answer? Anyone thinks this stands a real chance at replacing Jira? So I can share with you my own opinion. That depends how uh, I'm going to use Fiverr and how are you using Jira. So uh, you can always use Fiverr Jira integration. Let's navigate there again. Integrations here. Click on it. And here is how your Jira integration will look like. So you can use it like a data importer. You can import your data from Jira to Fiberry and see how your real data works in Fiberry. And then just understand whether it is enough for you or maybe in Jira there are some unique features like uh, real automation. So Jira is pretty powerful as well, but maybe you don't need that power, all the power it has. Uh, so then see if, it, if Fiberry works good enough, then for sure it can replace. So our real helps <laughs> that someday uh, you will you will come to us uh, from Jira. But in the early beginning, it's good enough just to have data from Jira in Fiberry uh, to use it for maybe strategy planning, uh, for road mapping, and so on. So let developers live there if they really love it and don't want to move anywhere else. But as a product manager, you will be able to get the data and analyze and build reports and so on. Okay, let's go back to the boring connections page. Uh, can I? Uh, there was a question about expert. So uh, we have expert improvements in our plans, but you can export any table you have. So uh, it's a very nice question. Maybe let me answer quickly. Okay, we have our top insights. We want to export it and we can click on the button here three dots right here and export table it will be exported to the csv um, and you can also create a table to visualize any kind of the data you have so now it is like a very power like a piece of power user territory so i hope that's good enough to talk about this right now as well so uh, here we have interviews by state right and we as we can see our interviews on the Kanban board. But we also want to see a table with all the interviews we have to be able to export it. Oh, maybe we just love that kind of view. We love tables. That's okay. In Fiber, you can create the views, anyone you need to visualize data in the most comfortable way for you. So we can create a table in user research and decide which data do we want to see. For example, we want to see our interviews. Hooray, we've created a table with interviews. Now I want to see which columns do we, do we want to see as, uh, which fields do we want to see as columns. So here are all the, field, all the fields our interview has. And we want to see a date, an assignee, a study it belongs to because we have a connection and maybe a state. So here is the table we've created. Ta-da! And let's call it, I don't know, all our interviews and now you've created it for sure you can export it again export table and then up to export you don't need this table anymore so that's okay for you you can delete the table so let's delete the table and nothing happens to our interviews so all the other interviews are still here we didn't delete them. We delete on the we deleted only the table that was showing to us our interviews. So maybe it will be easier for you to understand that if we navigate to my app screen again, here, the data lives in those colorful blocks with in, in this kind of I don't know templates or something like that. So all the features live in this block feature. All the insights live in this colorful block insight. But when you want to have a look at your feature via table, you can create a table. Okay, you can create a table 
and show all the features again. You don't need a table, you delete the table. You want a timeline instead? Let's create a timeline. You want to see the time of the features again with dates that are planned? Nice. Here is the timeline again. You don't need such a timeline? Delete it. So you can create and customize all the views, but that is, can look pretty overwhelming right now. Just keep in mind that you can do it. If you are missing the way, you can ping us an intercom and we'll be really glad to help you to build it. <laughs> okay. Um, oh God, looks like we have someone cool from Japan. <laughs> um, I don't see any new questions. If I miss something, I will be glad if someone will bump it again. But I'm just checking something we have. Do lookups only work on for parent records, but not child one too many records? Um, so let's say, let's maybe explain those lookup. I'm not sure because it can be too overwhelming. Michael, what do we think? What do you think? Can we show how our lookups work? Or I think it will not be pretty complicated. Let's go. So imagine, like you remember that everything here is connected. And we can we, we I've shown you how did we travel from the lowest level from subtask to the objective. Uh, and now let's say you want to see on the I don't know why, but you want to see on the user story objective it is working on. So we have a user story, user story belongs to the feature and feature belongs to the objective. And the user story, you want to see objective, its parent feature belongs to. Uh, that is possible. Uh, that is also pretty helpful for real other cases. So let's figure out how to do that. Let's open any user story we have. Okay. And here we want to have from feature an objective. For this case, we are going to add a new field. Remember, you can add any fields you need. And this is the field we need is a lookup. So let's add it. And lookup is an instrument to jump through hierarchies in read-only ways. So we are going to ask, please look up, go to the feature and go to my feature, so feature that is apparent of this uh, curtain story. And show me, please, its objective. Objective it belongs to. Feature objective. Okay, we add this field. Nice, we can drag and drop fields as well. Let's go it up. And now we see an objective. In fact, this feature, our parent belongs to, it is read only one. Because we don't, because our story is not linked to the objective, so we can only see a grandparent, in fact. And the same, I suppose, we can do for objectives. Let's jump to the objectives and see all the user stories it has, just taken from features. So let's add a lookup. And we want to check from features all the stories here feature stories add a field and now we've jumped from objective to stories so we just we jumped from grandparent to child but like like in another direction so now we see all the stories all our features has but we cannot a new one see so there is a button oh sorry sorry i misclicked so here we had a button link a create we can link new feature to the objective but we cannot link new story because they're not connected. But once we add a new story to the feature, let's do it. We have Jarvis, we need to teach him love and we need to uh, teach him to write a symphony. Okay, we added a new story here and it appeared here as well. So this field just steals the data from parent or from child level. And you can jump through as many hierarchies as you need. 
So remember, our stories have subtasks as well. So we can add a new lookup. Now it will be based on stories. And we want to see subtasks. Nice. Feature story subtasks. OK. And now we see a collection of all the subtasks all the other st our stories has from all the features and they're still in the read-only mode so you cannot add a new one but you can navigate to the existing one so i hope that answers the questions whether lookup can work for um, collections for many-to-many -many relations let's navigate to the more friendly screenshot okay um uh, yeah, both top-down and bots up that's right, <laughs> they work both directions. Uh, estimate time arrival automations, maybe Michael would answer, but I can say that it, we hope it will be soon. <laughs> you can follow us on our Twitter, uh, so in Twitter we are called as Fibri, and there we weekly publish our upcoming features with estimates. Uh, so for automations, there is no estimates for now, but once they will appear, you will see them in Twitter. So one, one month, hoping, crossing figures. Nice, sounds good, thanks. Can I use values from lookup fields and formulas for current entity? I want to export confidence field to feature entity from inside entity and calculate rise. Um, so Max asked pretty interesting, interesting question, but very specific one so we cannot copy paste fields like from feature to uh, insight or from feature to story you have to recreate if you like your field in one type of entity like if you like your uh, fields and features you have manually to recreate it uh, on user stories level on subtasks level anywhere you cannot just duplicate it and move from one to another sorry Okay, do we have any things here? I'm struggling with the decision to use lookups or relations. Um, so there is also a link to the community. Michael, I hope that you can just navigate there and we would answer that question uh, a little bit later. So, but the most, the biggest difference between lookups and relations is whether your data is duplicating or not. So if your user story has an objective and your user story has a feature, can there be a case when objective of the feature user story belongs to and objective of the user story are different? So let's see how it works. Let's cover a bad case. So let's add a new relation we don't need in fact, but that was our try between our objective and user story because you want to see an objective on the user story level. Let's set it. That's a, like, I don't like this example, but I feel that I have to show it. We add any relation from objective to story. Right, objective can have many stories, story can have one objective. Okay. One more error appeared. God, it looks more like a spider web right now. And now let's go to our any our user story. Okay. Now our story has a feature, and feature belongs to this objective. And we can also link one more objective for you for story as well. Let's cheer up product teams. If your user story can belong in fact, to two objectives at the same time, one from its parent, one it's unique, and it is okay for you that it belongs to two different objectives. Nice. Then look up, uh, then relation is a nice solution. But if it cannot, and if this setup looks strange for you, then don't add a relation like this. Just use a lookup field. And let's delete it because I think that this is hilarious. <laughs> Sorry for this case, for this curtain case. Maybe your case is more complicated, uh, but we will check it a bit later, maybe after the webinar. Oh. Okay, do we have any other questions? Uh, 
How long have you prepared for a lunch? So maybe I would answer it a bit faster than Michael in chat. So Fiber was launched, uh, as far as I remember, four years. It, it, it has been, we have been working in Fiber for four years already. Um, our first public release was about two years ago in November uh, 2018. Yep. And our public release was on the 1st of the April 2020, right? Yes, from public release, it was one year ago. So on the 1st of April, one year ago, we launched public. And now we're still looking for our new customers and new users and just trying to get <laughs> what are the needs. So we have some experience about that. We're like a startup on steroids. Okay, I, s I promised that this webinar will take about 40 minutes and I lied, <laughs> sorry for that. We have about one hour past already, so maybe that's time to say goodbye, right? So many thanks for all of you for listening. So if you think that Fiber can bring real va value for you or your team, just don't hesitate to ping us in intercom anytime. Uh, feel free to visit Concierge page, page again. We would be really glad to talk to you face to face and discover and feel like uh, see your pains and see whether we can help and so on. Um, and that was really a pleasure. I'm inviting you to our next webinar. I'm sure it will appear soon. Maybe it will be about more powerful power power territory user features because we have a lot of things I never uh, I didn't even mention right now like action buttons you can program code on your own as well as iPad we have whiteboards we have pretty pow powerful reports that can collect data not from Fibery but also from other sources and uh, we have real lot of other things we would be great to we would be glad to share with you so thank you for all your time everyone was a pleasure and bye bye. Hope to see you again. Thank you, thank you. Bye.